It's the Benz Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this so Sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sip it here Hard time scrolling for your long shorts You might learn something you never know Could let you find And she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind And I am telling you I'm not going I'm the best driver that you've ever known There's no way I will ever go No, 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 no way There's no, 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 no way I'm leaving without what I'm due and you, and you, and you, you give me my trophy. Yes. Yes. What am I singing about? What am I singing about? Lewis Hamilton said, Bomber holes. <laughs> You will see me here for another two years. You will see me here for another two years in this Formula One racing. You will see me here. I will enter the same trouser until I see World Drivers Championship or whatever. World D Drivers Championship winner, whatever. What do you want to call it? Yes. Ninth time because we know he won the eighth time. We know he won the eighth time in Abu Dhabi. So he'll be a nine time world championship driver anyway that's i imagine i've introduced lewis hamilton before i've introduced myself it's me kelechi in a place to be and you are listening slash watching sym officially known as say your mind unofficially known as what what that's right suck your mum. and i'm back oh, i'm back but um for transparency's sake i'm recording this on a friday recording this on a friday so it comes out on a monday so i just know you know when i record this early you just know that some mess is gonna go down over the weekend and i will just have no parts in it um recording this early because um it's lev's birthday today friday it's his birthday today and we're going to be doing some um birthday stuff over the weekend so i wouldn't have had time to record so i thought let me get this out there imagine after all the basketballs i've been facing i'm still prioritizing recording this thing but <laughs> i've also got to do a sponsorship read so it's not that i don't care about you of course i'm here for you but i've also got to get the sponsorship read done like it is where it is but anyway back to um louise amilton um i'm i don't know i feel not that anyone gives a fuck what i feel right i feel conflicted by the by this decision but i know that i get the sense that since parting ways with Angela, I know he loves her dearly. She was a baby girl. She, you know, she was really helpful in all the bits that she did. Um, I feel that he's got this, he's back in this zone and he knows what he wants. And if Mercedes can just pull their finger out, Lord God, if Mercedes, AMG, Patronus, whatever else they want to add to their pussy client name, if we're going to just pull their finger out, he could have a, like... We know that R and Red Bull are breaching the cost cap rules, which is why they are able to have the car that they have that's dominating. And nobody wants to talk about it because they're just glad that a white boy is winning and it's not Lewis's blacky face that they have to see. That is, you know, that's the be all and end all of all of this. But I'm glad he said to them, listen, motherfuckers, even though there's a film that I'm consulting on that's come, you know, with Idris, not Idris Elba, um, Damson Idris and um, what's that blonde one's name? Brad Pitt even though i'm consulting on this movie and all of that stuff is going on i will still be here i will still be here dealing with you all and like he should get to experience the new race tracks right we've got some new some new tracks have we got some new tracks in 2024 because when, when was vegas relief yeah you know i honestly haven't been keeping up because everything's been so dry i can't lie formula one has been dry this um this season without me is being dry without me i don't care you can invite all of the celebrities in the world they don't have my zhuzh they don't have my sauce so therefore that's why it's dry i'm so sorry to tell you and also i hate having to watch win um cheetahs win i don't like it so and i don't want to hear christian horner's 
disgusting, dirty, stinking voice. And I don't want to hear Verstappen go, oh my God, I am so grateful that we'll do this again. 10 years, 10 years together. We will do all of this. Girl, fuck off, golden boot. Go away, energy drink boy. So I was conflicted, but I get why Lewis would want to do it. He's, that means he's not leaving this sport until he's 40. 40 years old. But I believe in him. The same way when he decided that he wanted to make the move from McLaren and he wanted to move to Mercedes and people were like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? Da, 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 da. Like, the, like, he's got an, a, like a sixth sense when it comes to his own career. So I trust that he is doing what is best for him. Um, but anyway, reading the news, it says here, Lewis Hamilton has put pen to paper on a new Mercedes contract um, that will keep the seven time, eight time world champion on board through the 2025 season with, um, with teammate George Russell also retained for the same period. See now, I don't like that. I don't like that, but I guess they want consistency. I guess they want that, but I just need George to manage himself and manage himself accordingly is all I'm saying. Hamilton, now 38. See, everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's doing the same thing. They've started to say, they say, uncle, uncle, where are you? Uncle, you are a criminal. Uncle, you are a criminal. This, you must leave. You must go. They're starting to, to uncle is enough, but I don't believe so. He's a babe. He's a young babe. Like, he's a Capricorn, isn't it? So he ages. Because Saturn is his ruling planet. Like, he ages. Well, Pluto is technically his ruling planet. But anyway, he, even with Pluto, everything with him ages slowly. He's going to look young. He's going to have the vitality for many, many years to come. Like, he's fine. Like, I think he'll only get finer with age, basically, R. Lewis. So Hamilton, now 38, was in the final year of his existing Silver Arrows deal and had been in talks with team boss Total Wolf for several months with those discussions eventually resulting in fresh terms. I hope the terms involve me. You look at, you know, I love to make everything about me, but the terms really need to involve me because how are you not going to do this without a baby girl like Kalechi? Because somebody needs to sit down. I, just let me sit the team down. The engineers, let me just, the mechanics, let me just sit with them. The ones who do the pit stops, let me just speak to them. Because what are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Why, why have we set ourselves the challenge that we want to go slower? <laughs> why are we doing that? I believe with my egoic self that i can save mercedes amg patronus i feel like i can save them anyway it comes halfway through hamilton's 11th season for mercedes 11th season so when he finishes it'll be 13 seasons with the mandem with this mercedes mandem um, having joined the Brackley team back in 2013 and gone on to set a host of records from championship wins tied with Michael Schumacher on seven, no, beaten Schumacher because he got eight, to pole positions 104, race wins 103 and much more. I pray so many more race wins over you. Um, Hamilton and Mercedes are currently working hard to return to the front of the F1 grid. Their respective title winning runs have having come to an end in 2021. Both sides are confident that the renewed partnership will yield further success. We dream every day of being the best and we have dedicated the past decade together to achieving that goal, said Hamilton. Being at the top does not happen overnight or over a short period of time. It takes commitment, hard work and dedication. And it's been an honour to earn our way into the history books with this incredible team. We we have never been hungrier to win. We have learned from every success, but also every setback. We continue to chase our dreams. We continue to fight no matter the challenge and we will win again. You will win again. You will win again. I have spoken over your life. I've prophesied it over your life. Lewis, what's your middle name? Lewis something Hamilton, Sha. I've prophesied it over. Why can't I remember his middle name? It doesn't matter. I've prophesied it over your life. You will have many more wins because these pussy clucks, these bomber holes that are trying you, they will not succeed. All of them will fall down and die. They must fall down and die. Anybody that wants to put obstacle in your way must fall down and die because you must have all of those championships. I don't back losers. I just don't. And you're not a loser by any stretch of the imagination, but you must win and you must win again because them pussy clucks, them, they can't hold you back. 
Um, a similarly pleased Russell oh, added, I have grown up with this team ever since joining as part of the junior program back in 2017. It's my home and it feels fantastic to extend our special relationship through 2025. After stepping up to the Mercedes race seat last year, I wanted to reward the trust and the belief that Toto and the rest of the team placed in me. Taking my first pole position and race win last year was an unforgettable ex uh, feeling. Okay, girl. More importantly, though, it's been great to work with everybody at Brackley and Bricksworth to make progress with our car and push forward our development. Their loyalty and vision and hard work is inspiring. Okay, whatever. Um... Adding further background to the news, Mercedes boss Wolf commented, continuing with our current, let me not do it, with our current driver lineup was a straightforward decision. We have the strongest pairing on the grid and that you do because Verstappen, Perez, imbalanced. Signs, Leclerc, imbalanced. Everywhere, in no balance. <laughs> it's pop poising. It's pop poising. It's non balance. <laughs> so objectively speaking, I maybe this is something that you can put in your spotify comments um to me because in, on spotify you can leave comments or even on the youtube video you can leave comments right do i feel like no matter how much george russell irritates me currently because remember i felt irritated by um lando norris and then i've kind of grown to like him don't quote me on that um as much as George Russell annoys me, I do think he's a better teammate for Lewis than Bottas. I don't know. Maybe the air is thin where I am, but that's what I'm considering. If you're hearing noises because next door is blasting music. Anyway, um, continue with our current driver lineup was a straightforward decision. We have the strongest pairing on the grid and both drivers are playing a crucial role in the team to move us forward. The strength and stability they provide will be key building blocks for our future success. Our partnership with Lewis is one of the most successful in the sports history. It was always a formality that we would continue together and it's energizing for us to be confirming that publicly. His qualities as a pure racing driver are illustrated by his remarkable track record but over our years together he has grown to become a a pillar and leader of our team and sport i might add those leadership qualities are crucial as we focus on fighting for world championships again as f1's biggest global star he has also played a key role in shaping our commitments to diversity inclusion and sustainability yet you have not diversified and included me and sustained me anyway that will be foundations for our success in the years ahead um George is the leading light of this generation. Girl, I'm not reading that. That's none of my business. That's none of my business. Anyway, you want to do two years, Lewis? Do your two years. God is with you. Do your two years. If at the end of the two years you want to box anybody in their head, I support it. I support it. But let's see. It'll be an interesting... I don't know about the rest of this season. I know Monza is this weekend. All I remember from Monza was the... Um, all I think back to is Mons um, when I think about Monza is when um, Verstappen's car went on Hamilton's car. That was Monza, in it? Anyway, it's just bad memories. Memories from the corners of the track. Oily colored memories of the cheating pussy club. Thank you, thank you. Another great song on my part. Um... Anyway, let me get to Tarot because I need to leave here very shortly. And I've got um, a very, very good um, interview for you, actually. You'll notice from the title of this episode, I'm speaking with a redneck and um, his name is Crash. He's absolutely wonderful. Touch wood. No, he is. He's wonderful. Um, and I learned a lot about rednecks and I think that you could all benefit from this information too. And yeah, so that's why I'll be speaking to Crash in a little bit. But in the meantime, oh, and of course, thank you to everybody that sent me such lovely messages of support and everything um, regarding the B, uh, GB News fuckery, um, Kwati, Klu Klux Kwarteng and the motherfuckers at Novara, all of that stuff. Like, thank you for all of the wonderful messages you sent me. I just want to, and also big up, um, I think I should say specifically Marlon Kamika because um, he organised a rally outside GB News to address how horrible that they've been to black women because soon after me, they attacked, Dan Wooten again, attacked Dawn Butler on his show um, with that ugly, useless fucking idiot from one of the conservative party people. Um, 
like they, they're just relentless so i'm a uh, thank you for being visible in standing up for us in that way it's greatly greatly appreciated i want to say though that there are some weirdos if you're watching this on youtube remember that this is not actually live i've recorded this on a friday so if you're going to jump into any platform or jump onto any platform and say kalechi's on youtube right now talking away right now it's not live turn this on turn it's it on not live okay okay because some of you sometimes some of you go and say really wild things about me and you're meant to be supporters and it's giving weird yeah um thank you to everybody that supported to the people who have positions of power some people who have even gotten very close to let me not say that but people who like like to be around me right all of these people that have positions of power and you saw what was happening and all you want to send me is thoughts and prayers. That's the most that you can do because you can't use your power to actually say like what's going on is wrong. Why do you, that means you have no power or you're choosing not to use your power. Which one is it? Because both, um, both outcomes or both um, possibilities are heartbreaking, but I'm leaning towards you clearly don't have any power because the middle class of this, the, the middle class that certain black people are trying to force in this um, country it's very sickening because you don't want to actually do anything. You can create as many um, um, groups and this and that. I was a word I was going to use. And if I use it, the people will now start shouting. But you'll be forming all of these groups saying that you want to address this and you want to address that. And you address sweet fuck all because you just care about yourself and you just care about respectability politics. And it's just this time has shown me how powerful i am as an individual the impact that i have as an individual i read um in one of the one of the wagga wagga um newspaper platforms that 101 people made complaints to ofcom about the comments that were made about me on gb news 101 people the comments that were made about um prince harry received um about one of the presenters um basically alluded to shooting prince, prince harry that got 74 ofcom complaints the basis of the article was that in one week in the past week, GB News has received over 400 complaints to Ofcom. That is saying a lot. Take that motherfucker off air. Just shut the shit down. Shut it down. All right? So I appreciate that, you know, like you lot could ride out for me in that way. Those of you who, who did. The others of you who might be listening to this and just spend your whole life being complacent and all you want to do is chop content, chop content. I'm disgusted by you, disgusted by you and disappointed in you. And you, I would suggest that you just switch off the thing now and don't come back as far as I'm concerned. That's all I have to say because common things you can't support. Oh, you can't support the book because money. You can't come to the show because money. Ofcom, what does that cost you? Move because like let's all start knowing ourselves let's all start knowing ourselves and where we stand i know that other people have so much going on in their lives but you come to the, listen to this show you come here for the my perspective on things for a reason but when it comes to, when push comes to shove where are you i think it's disgusting <laughs> that's all i have to say i think it's disgusting and i think i'm well within my rights to say that um so that's that anyway like i said let's get to the tarot uh tarot tarot rarer the tarot rarer the tarot letter and it says here well it's a long message so i'm not going to go through all of it but it says um yeah let me just go to the tarot part it says thank you for reading at um thank you for your tarot reading a few weeks ago this is ages ago responding to a question about death somebody else's question as always your readings guide me and it has really helped me with grieving the recent loss of a dear friend learning she's gone from this world but has transcended to a new existence i'm learning a lot about death it has humbled me and made me appreciate what i can and cannot control today my question is about romantic love i've been single for nearly four years mostly by choice i had two terrible relationships before that and to be honest i've been cool being single i've had a few situationships but to be honest my focus has been on healing and learning from my past i realize i have put romantic love on a pedestal and thought a spouse would save me from my own pain but instead um but they instead inflicted more and i subconsciously repeated my own childhood traumas of abandonment and loss listening to your conversation with lovey ajayi last year opened my eyes to the fact that as a dark-skinned woman i can show up in my wholeness and still have a loving partner my question is how do i go about this the streets are wild Kelechi but I'm keeping my heart open to true love in the spirit of bell hooks thank you as always Kelechi you see that my name is pronounced Kelechi or Kelechi yeah not Kelechi 
Kalichi is there right now. Kalichi, who the fuck is Kalichi? Anybody that calls me Kalichi, I'll assume that you work for the feds. Yeah, I'll, I'll just assume that you're a member of the MI6. I'll assume that you're a plant. My name is not Kalichi. Fucking hell. How many times can you tell somebody? You're clearly new here. Anyway, um, let's get into the cards. Let's see what they say. Not my skin glowing. Somebody sent me the message the other day. Like, oh God, should I even say this? They sent me an email and I think that they tried to recall the email, but I got it anyway, where they were like, okay, let's see, I was just watching your most recent video and um, um, your eyes your eyes were essentially your eyes were lopsided and bulging and if it's what i think it is and they sent whatever um diagnosis that they thought it was and they were like yeah you should go to a hospital immediately <laughs> you lot just insult me every time like you've never failed to let me know that i'm clapped or that you perceive me to be clapped because what is this my eyes are this way. My dad has the same eyes. My brothers, my siblings, everybody has the same eyes. I don't know what to tell you. And I appreciate the concern sometimes. But if you just look at the previous videos, unless I've been dying for a while, like it's the same there too. God, that's how the other day somebody said to me, well, it was a while back now when I was on a poll. I think I told this story. I was on the poll. And they messaged, um, I put the video on Instagram stories. And it was it Instagram stories or just Instagram. And they were like, oh, you're just so confident. Like I've got the inside of my face. <laughs> they were like, you're just so confident. The insides of my thighs are black like yours. And I couldn't imagine doing what you're doing and having it on show, but you just give me so much confidence because you don't care about yours. <laughs> i am so done with the internet i cannot wait to the day just deleting all my pages and you never see me again me and my wonky face and my black thighs let me just come and be going because <laughs> ah who did what well, said who die of insult but we get close we get close ah anyway let's switch views to see what cards we've got so we've already got two cards uh, three cards out for this reading about what happens next um how do you go about finding love um being open to love and all of them things there uh, uh. let's get these cards as well so i'm now using the dickhead and recovery affirmation card decks or the card deck as well and seeing what's there okay card straight away i love when the messages just jump out they're like yeah because you've got places to be girl um let's see what we've got here then i'm just moving things around round round baby round round um the hierophant you have to consider what your beliefs are around um partnering and coupling up um there's clearly something that needs to be um, addressed there we've got the three of swords in reverse like so many people say that they want to get in a relationship they want to get in a relationship but they're very much scared of heartbreak um and for some people it's like they want to get in a relationship but they like moving towards people who are emotionally unavailable yes emotionally unavailable or are already in particular situations with other people we've got the seven of swords here as well so they're already in situations with other people and you're like no that's where i want to be um, and you have to ask yourself what made you, what encouraged you or what shaped you to be so attracted to people who um, have limited love to give? Why is it that you want the person that doesn't really respond to you, that um, doesn't, uh, that's very closed off, like anybody that is welcoming that responds to you, you don't really like that vibe. It says here from the Dickhead and Recovery Affirmation card deck, I trust that even when I cannot see what is ahead, I'm still following my divine path. And I think that that's a beautiful message too to take in um, because we, we don't know how relationships are going to turn out, but there are certain um, things that we can expect or look, the card that we've got from um, the wisdom of the Oracle deck is fork in the road. So I feel like the fork in the road comes out as well because let me change screens. Um, the fork in the road comes out as well because I think it's stressing the fact that, yeah, this is a time of pattern breaking. We talk about, um, oh, sorry, 
keep hitting the mic. We talk about um, ancestral patterns and generational curses and things like that. Look at the people around you. What, like sometimes it, within our cultures or within popular culture, we make deceit seem fashionable. It's almost like we've accepted, especially when people are like, oh, you know, men are going to be men. Men cheat. Oh, you know, if he does this, I'm going to do that and whatever. Like, how have we turned relationships into a battleground? How have we turned relationships into battleship where it's like oh i'm gonna make this move i don't know what move they're making but i'm gonna make this move so if they they can't take me for a dickhead if you are focused on not being taken for a dickhead in any sort of dynamic probably you shouldn't be in that dynamic at all because clearly some kind of fight or flight response has been triggered um whether by them or just by yourself or by the circumstances the environment whatever the case may be and um or you clearly can see that they are trying to take you for a dickhead in which case why are you there until people can come at relationships a, a lot more honestly then we're going to be struggling but with all of this misinformation that's flying around in this day and age where people are like oh um you have to be in your divine masculine you have to be in your divine feminine half of you nah that's very generous 80 95 percent of you don't know what the fuck you're talking about divine masculine divine feminine you don't know what you're talking about i just want to meet soul to soul i just want to meet another soul and enjoy another soul like life is going to be challenging of course but um i posted something in patreon a few days ago or was it yesterday at this point where i was talking about a dream that i had and what i interpreted that dream to mean and i titled that post um um are you ready for love or something i am ready for love uh -huh. you know that song by india re um and i was i mentioned that song as well and i said like she talks about why are you hiding from me but sometimes we are the ones hiding from love because we are not ready to do the things that true love requires which is vulnerability you don't want to put you don't want to put vulnerability on the table but you want to do everything else so what is the point of what you're doing then if you are not ready to and so basically when i put that post up um some people commented and they were like oh it reminds them about jessica a post that jessica dory did or it's in jessica's book um jessica's another um tarot reader she and she's a psychotherapist as well who i enjoy her offerings on um when you're part of her newsletter and she has a book out and um jessica says something about like instead of thinking about what can this person do for me in a relationship it's about looking at the things that you know that you the lessons that you need to learn if we understand that relationships um are the the relationships that we have with other people are reflections of the relationships that we have with ourselves we can approach certain dynamics relationships or budding relationships with the mindset that what am i needing to learn about myself and and about the world and about love and will this person will this dynamic with this person help me to learn that thing and i would add to that as a caveat in the healthiest way possible because there are many ways that we can learn a lesson. But if you want to learn a lesson and be doing bas 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 bas, is that really worth your time? So when going on dates, when um, chatting with people, have a chat with yourself about the lessons that you know. If you're honest with yourself, if you're vulnerable, if you're naked to, with yourself and to yourself, what are the lessons that you need to learn? And will this person that you are initiating something with, pursuing, whatever the case may be, are you going to be able to learn those lessons with them in the healthiest way possible? Are they willing to go on that journey with you based on the lessons that they also need to learn of themselves and of the world and about love, right? These are the things that we need to consider. And so this is what it's saying for you that clearly the people are around you. You just have to decide on the lesson that you want to learn and whether they are able to um, accommodate the space or um, accommodate you learning those lessons and working through those patterns while they also work through their own things and people are honest enough they will do this sporadic stuff of like oh friendship and i'll check in on this day and i'll message on this day and i'll do this people are weird people are weird you don't have to do all of that if it's not your vibe it's not your vibe you don't have to do things the way that people are doing it because it's apparently the modern way of dating if it doesn't work for you it doesn't because i promise you there are loads of other people that, that it doesn't work for and if you're honest about what you want I think it will clear up a lot of things. But let's see, fork in the road, what else does it say? Number 13. Number 13. What time is it? Let me just, oh, child, I got to get going. Number 13. 
Um, I'll read the relationship message. It says here, you've reached a moment of truth in the evolution of your relationship. Which will you choose? To open up to the possibility of love, there you go, or to remain isolated, to go deeper um, and to commit to mutual passion or to walk away? This is a time to take responsibility for your truest desire and follow it. Be honest with yourself about what you are willing to do invest and give then choose you cannot make a wrong choice if you move forward with the relationship know that it will be based in truth and authenticity you will have uh, you will have made a conscious decision rather than simply hanging on because you don't want to be alone or ending things because you're afraid of the intensity of genuine connection Woo. all roads lead to the lessons you must learn in your relationships regardless of the decision you make it will place you on a path to a truer experience of the heart so I pray that that resonates with you. Um, I'll now big up this week's, um, well, let me f say as well that if you want to book um, an email tarot reading, you can go to my website and go to the shop and you can purchase a tarot reading there uh, for £22 or you can get your month ahead readings on Patreon for £33 a month where I send you your personalised month ahead reading um, during the middle of um, the month for the next four weeks um, or just wait around and see if I um, happen to open up any one-to-one -one Zoom sessions and you can book onto those that will be made available pardon me on my website and I usually announce that to my patrons first or send me your messages, send me your tarot questions, your dilemmas, whatever the case may be. Send it to me on sym at kalechiokafor.com and I'll aim to read it out on the show and pull some tarot cards for you. So I pray that that resonates with the writer, uh, the writer in her. That's what I was going to say, the writer in her, the listener for this week. And yep, yeah, now I'll big up the this week's show sponsors who are ExpressVPN. Be right back. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this week's episode. Well, going online without ExpressVPN is like using your smartphone without a protective case. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine, but all it takes is one accidental drop onto solid concrete to make you wish that you'd put that protective case on. And that's what it's like when you go to connect to an unencrypted, unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, airports, etc. Your online data is not secured. Any hacker on the same network can gain access to and steal your personal data. That's your passwords, your financial details, all of them things there. Sometimes maybe even your nudes. I don't know. Anyway. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed and a smart 12 year old could do it. I doubt if Boris Johnson could do it. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. So why use ExpressVPN? Well, it creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. So hackers can't steal your sensitive data. Super secure means that it uh, would take a hacker like... Uh, um, over a billion years that is what they say a billion years i don't know how they tested that but it will take a hacker over a billion years to be able to get past an express vpn encryption ha! sorry to the cia anyway it's easy to use so you can fire it up on the app fire up the app click on a button and you're instantly protected and it works on all devices so you can use it on your phone your laptop your tablets and more you can um even use it on your tv right so you can stay secure on the go or even when you're at home and you're chilling so i enjoy express vpn to the extent that my thingy with them because you know they give you your trial and you can try it for free mine ended ages ago and i'm still um on there still paying subscription because i genuinely just think it's so easy to use and i know that nobody can across it you know so i love it and that's why i'm telling you that you should use it too so secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash straws. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash straws. And you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash straws. So go and get yourself encrypted and encrusted. No, that doesn't go. En encrypted and cute. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to share your magnificence. So for share your magnificence this week, like I said, I um be talking to Crash, who is a redneck, who um a white man who is well, yeah, called him white man, who's reclaiming um the term redneck 
and I happened to stumble across one of his videos on TikTok. And since then, I was like, this is brilliant. This is informative. But as he says in, the, in our chat himself, there were certain things that he needed to then get clarification on and he was corrected on. And I just love that, that we're all learning from each other. We don't all have the answers. We None of us have the answers, but we've got a lot of questions and we're trying to figure it out together. And I just think that that's beautiful. So I'll let you go and enjoy our chat and um, catch you in a bit. Hi. Crash, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for joining me on the podcast. I find you so fascinating. Not like, you know that people say that, like you're some kind of specimen under some kind of microscope. But no, I, I love people who teach me things that I learn from. And I happened to stumble upon your um, TikTok one day and I was just like, wow, he's so smart. So I thought, why not have you on the show so everybody else can get smarter? I think it was one thing that I saw um the first video i saw somebody was like what do you mean there's no white race and then you basically broke it down and you were like well these people were invited at this point and these people were invited at this point and this is where we got to but i would in a way still describe because you know that based on pseudoscience and and eugenics ra um, race was there the white race was constructed for a reason right right oh absolutely um the re now, I had to oversimplify it because it's the internet, it's TikTok, brevity is king, and nuance has a character limit. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I, what I really did once I seen the uh, comment, because I had a bunch of other comments, and they were pretty much all from white people saying, what the white race is totally a thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I wasn't even going to bother to entertain them. Um, this, this comment came from a person of color. So I was like, okay, I feel like I should probably talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but And you can't really break all of that down in 180 characters or less. Uh, so what I really kind of did was I took Tim Wise's video on the same subject yeah. and kind of dripped a lot of the fat away from it uh, and talked about it in my language, the language that I came from, because it made sense to me. Yeah. And then just post that. I did not think it was going to resonate with as many people as it did. Uh, that's the truth with all of my videos. Like the first video I made that went viral, I thought 200 people were going to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't think a quarter of a million people were going to watch it. Yeah. And then later on, I did another video about like the origin of the term hillbilly, or at least the term in America. Yes. Uh, I found Found out later, it's been used in um, it's been used in Scotland for something else. Mm -hmm. um, that is not what it meant here, mm -hmm. and that's not what it was used for here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll be damned, you know, a million and a half people have watched it, and that's yeah. just according to TikTok's numbers. Yeah, <laughs> because obviously people download it from there, and then they go on to share it and things like that. But um, based on your understanding of well, no, before we even go there, I really wanted to talk about rednecks because, you know, I feel like over the course of this podcast at some point, I feel like I've said, like, I don't like the way that when people want to um, describe a racist, they put on this sort of accent and then they describe it like, oh, no, it's just these people over here that do these, it's these rednecks that do these things. And then I watched one of your videos and you broke it down in such a way. I was like, my God, this is it. You know, like when you know something on the surface, but you don't actually know the reason that you know the thing is fucked up so, and then until somebody <laughs> breaks it down. So could you talk us through that? Oh, absolutely. And that and that uh, phenomenon was intentionally created. Uh, that didn't happen by accident. Mm. Uh, they wanted you to forget that like J. Edgar Hoover was from like fucking Connecticut or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, uh, there has to be a portrayal in the media of racism and white supremacy as being something that only ignorant, poor white people do. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so where the term redneck started um Originally, yeah, it was a pejorative for working folks that would get burned on the backs of their necks mm -hmm. uh, while they were out work. Uh, that was never exclusively white people. Yes. Like, we all know that. Mm -mm -mm. The sharecroppers are all white folks. Not even by, not even close. Yeah. Uh, well, the first time it was used as a term of endearment was during the Battle of Blair Mountain in 1921. Uh, this was a part of the Coal Wars. Uh, what happened there was the northern industrialists found out there was coal in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, so they came down and did all of the uh, all of the stuff that we know 
rich capitalist industrialists will do when they find out there's resources to exploit. Uh, um, and the unions formed and the unions resisted. Um, and some of the unions that took part in the Battle of Blair Mountain were some of the first integrated unions in the United States. They were not segregated and they caught a lot of flack for that too. Right. Uh, so between 7,000 and maybe as many as 10,000 miners that were on strike marched on Logan County, West Virginia. Mm. And this was kind of in response to the murder of Stid Hatfield, Smiling Stid. He was a pro-union sheriff out in Matawan. Uh, and this guy was hardcore pro-union. Uh, this guy had put people in the dirt. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and they had arrested him and charged him um, for getting rid of a couple of folks that were harassing minors. And as he was coming out of the courthouse, um, the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency rolled up and gunned him down. Wow. Because they knew they couldn't beat him in a they knew they couldn't beat him in a fair fight, so they had to set him up. Well, once that happened, the unions got pissed. And so they armed themselves up and they marched on Blair Mountain. Uh, during the fighting, they all wore red sashes around their necks mm. or red bandanas to tell everybody apart while they were out there in them hills. Mm. And that's how the term redneck got applied to them. Now, unfortunately, once that battle was over, a lot of these guys, either the ones that survived the battle, ended up going to jail or uh, their names became public. And so it was a lot harder for these guys to get a job. And so they took to um, the manufacture and distribution of illegal alcohol. We call it moonshining and, bo and bootlegging. Uh, again, never exclusively white people. Um, and I should... I feel like I should clarify on my video that I did about this. I was incorrect because I said, because they did bring in the air force to drop bombs on the miners during the battle of Blair mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the first time the American government had ever did that. That is not true. Mm -hmm. um, I knew about Tulsa. I thought Tulsa had come after Blair mountain. Okay. So I was incorrect. Folks uh, corrected me on that in the comments section real quick. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that they did because I don't want to spread misinformation. But I hear uh, you because sometimes chronologically we're trying to put everything together and it's just like there's just been so much destruction for so long. I, I can't trace it, but you're right. It's good to kind of you know, jiggle it about and, and, and have it. So we see, we see, and it's interesting that you mentioned Tulsa as well because before, in some ways, before they go ahead and say that, yeah, we're going to hurt white-skinned people, it's like, let's try it on these black people first and, and go from there. Right. Well, um, and then fast forwarding from that in the uh, 60s, there became a concerted effort to break apart this movement. Mm -hmm. uh, the unions were already losing a lot of power politically. Uh, so they wanted to like break that also apart culturally. Mm. Uh, so there became a whole lot of portrayals in the media of not just poor white Southerners with Confederate flag bumper stickers running around doing a bunch of fucked up shit to black people. Mm -mm. Uh, but that was a lot of it. Uh, there were also other stories there. You know, we had the Dukes of Hazard. We had Smokey and the Bandit where we had rednecks out doing red, out doing cool redneck shit. Yeah. Uh, the thing that, but the thing that these two things had in common is that they were all white. Mm -mm -mm. There were no more black redneck. There were never any black rednecks in the, in the media. Even though we know that that was a thing that happened. Black people have been involved in this movement since the beginning. And so, and so because we both know, but just to clarify, obviously we know that, well, we would say that that's intentional, right? To be like, well, oh, in order to ostracize and to and break apart the movement, focus on just the white people who are part of this movement and say, all of you black people, you were never part of it. So it makes it easier to hurt them, harm them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, that became the stereotype for the redneck all the way up until about the 90s. And then a whole bunch of hack comedians uh, realized that they could start making money by trading on the name. Uh, we had characters like Larry the Cable Guy, and I call him a character because that is what he is. And to the credit of the guy that plays him, whose name I can't remember, uh, his name is not Larry. He's not a cable guy. And to his credit, he has always said that that was a character that he played. That's not really him. Uh, but he still made millions portraying that character and still, you know, perpetuated the stereotype of what poor white Southerners are like. Uh, 
And like you said, yes, all of this was intentional to kind of take black people out of the equation and make redneck being just about a, being it just a white man thing. Yeah, because, and I love learning and you know, like I really appreciate what you said that I fucking love it when you're like, you know what? Somebody corrected me on something and I'm boom, now I'm corrected, thanks, right? Sometimes people don't want to accept when they get new pieces of information that I need to reconfigure or at least add to what I thought I knew now that I've been provided with this other piece of information, not necessarily even new, but it's been contextualized for me in such a way that now I have a wider understanding of everything that's going on. So prior to speaking with you, all like in my mind, redneck was, you know, redneck Confederate flag or can't, you know, be careful. That's not. And then I had to like sit down and, and it's again, you know, it's the things that we learn, right? The hypocrisy of it, because the moment I started watching your video and I heard your accent, I was like, here we go. It's going to be some wild shit. And then, and then I started right. listening and I was like, oh, I, I, I agree. <laughs> what? I agree. And so I had to challenge my own, um, my own bias, like my, the, the, the things that I had just been indoctrinated with. And I think that ultimately this is the nature of white supremacy that I'm up here, you know, shouting about racism, this capitalism, this, da, 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 da. But I, I was also programmed in a way to take a particular accent on a particular type of person and go, this is what this means. That's the division. Right. Right. And I'd, um, you'll find in a lot of, especially my older videos, I have a non-regional accent that I can pop that in and out of every, when I don't want to sound like an extra from Justified. But, um, well, it's actually, it's actually helped me out being around a whole lot of rad folks who like, I would do that and they would hear it and they'd say, man, you ain't got to do that. That's, that's classist as fuck. Uh, like just talk natural more natural you speak the more real you sound and honestly the easier it is to take in what you're saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, i still fall victim to it i still like even in videos i make now i'll end up slipping into that accent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it's not something you do consciously uh, some folks have said code switching i don't like to think of it like that mm -hmm. because like codes it's a thing that's kind of uh, unique to the black community Mm -hmm. as a survival mechanism yeah and that's not what it is and that's not what it is for me mm. you know yeah um but I, I even talked a little bit in one of my videos about the accent because a lot of, especially in appalachia we have a thing called mountain talk mm -hmm. and that came from that came from tri-racial communities that's why you can hear the african-american vernacular english in it yeah um yeah. and and yeah, uh, I'll always say racism, white people don't experience it, but we do get what I like to call splash damage. Um, because, yeah, on the one hand, yeah, with this accent, you get people look at you a certain way. They think about you a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, they expect certain things to come out of your mouth. They expect you can't be educated with that kind of accent. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, you will also get accused of trying to, quote unquote, talk black. Ah. Oh. Uh, and now I'm not saying that doesn't happen. There's plenty of white people that actively do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most of them are from, most of those guys are from the suburbs. You don't see a whole lot of the guys in the hills and hollers trying to talk black because they know that's fucked up. But it's etymologically <laughs> over time, the way, especially when you explain the history, for instance, of the rednecks and, and the unions and things, there were a lot of people together in a particular class structure. So people would have access to the same type of language. They would shorten things in this, but they would shorten things in a similar way. Like, you know, I'm fixing to, you know, I'm, you know, all of these things or I'm about to do something. Everybody, people would speak in a similar way based on a similar type of, socioeconomic experience even if there are um intersections within that there is still a collective experience within um i guess the working class in that regard oh yeah oh gosh yeah yeah we we basically have our own language out here mm. um now the the folks that you're describing the rednecks that drive around in the confederate stickers doing racist shit we like to call them pecker woods uh, uh one I also call them bootlickers because that is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually got a video up about Pecker Woods and where that term originated as well. It's It was coined by black people and it's pretty much always meant loud, obnoxious white people that cause yeah. problems. I hear it. I hear it.
Um, because I think that what was refreshing for me was when you said, if you're racist, you ain't no redneck. If you're a capitalist, you ain't no redneck. Like, because w- yeah. I, I, I commend your sort of um i commend your sort of your courage to be like no let's reclaim this word because it is challenging you know because i listening to you when you said it i was just like yeah i mean i get you wanting to reclaim the word but i feel like it's stuck with these lot doing this wild shit so how do we make it back but then i had to check myself and i was like see you're now all lives mattering things essentially because you're you're failing to see that change is possible if people decide that the change is just going to happen Right, right. Uh, the rednecks out here, we're starting to do that because we ain't, we ain't been gatekeeping that term like we should have been. Mm. And you're starting to be pushed back from that because mm. uh, we had the redneck revolt just recently, which were a, bun- which were a bunch of folks, um, working class folks out here in the South that they were hardcore leftists and they were becoming like an art. I, I don't mean to say them in past tense. These folks are still around. Yeah. I don't know if they're still as I don't know if they're still as organized. I know some of the chapters that we had nearby here kind of broke down due to all of the fucked up shit that happens to leftist groups, especially when they start arming themselves in America. Mm-hmm. All of that shit happened to them. Uh, COINTELPRO is still alive and well. Yes. It just changed for Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we are seeing pushback away from it, and we're kind of starting to see people getting pushed away from that. Uh, especially now that everybody's flying all of the pecker woods are flying Trump flags. It's way, way easier to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. the one thing, the one thing Donald Trump, I would say did positively for, uh, the Southern community is they took, is that, uh, he let these guys pull their masks off and show everybody who they really are. Yes. Uh, that's the only thing good he's done. Was that, did you, did you ever find that hard? Was there, was, were there any people that you would like hang around with and then suddenly Trump came about and you were like, raw, wow, was not expecting that of you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That would happen a lot. Now, um, in the, in the poorer communities, you don't see that as much because they, we tend to be a little bit loud and opinionated. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, the kind of people that are going to be supporting Donald. Yeah. Uh, it's less. It happens less of. It's a little more insidious once you get into like suburbia. Yeah. Uh, what we like to call the middle class. I've always said the middle class is a joke. It's another one of those. It's another one of those concepts that they came up with to keep working people fighting for scraps. Yes. But um, once you get into those areas with the suburbs and the petty bourgeoisie, then it becomes a little more insidious because they don't like. They don't say the quiet parts out loud. Mm. Yeah. And that's the thing. And that's what we're finding here. So like within having access to and be, you know, having access for, uh, to these sorts of people throughout the years, when somebody like me is being told you're a race beta, you're a race grifter. Like, you know, I, I mentioned to you about the Lucy Letby, that murderer woman stuff and how it got posted on like, the right wing channels over here what are they what are they saying to me like what are they saying that i need to understand about how they see me uh the way they see you is you don't know your place mm. i'll be then honest with you that's what they're trying to tell you and that's what they've been telling black people out here literally since the end of the civil war mm, 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 mm. uh i'll i'll be 100 percent real with you they're because they're not going to tell you the truth um, it has nothing to do with what you do. Uh, once you start speaking up and speaking out, there's nothing you can do, nothing you can say yeah. that's going to make you go away. The only thing that will, this is what I say, like, if you're an anti, if you're doing racist shit mm. and anti-racist come at you for it, the way to make them stop is to stop doing racist shit. Yeah. But if you're a black person or if you're queer, if you're trans, if you're an immigrant, if you're Muslim, etc., and you start speaking up and speaking out on the issues that affect your communities and the Peckerwoods come at you for it, mm. the only way to make them go away is for you to stop existing. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they, they revert so quickly to death threats. Like, it's always like, oh, no, we'll exterminate you. Like, you you, you, you just can't. You, Yeah, that's it. Like, there's no sort of like, oh, shut up. It's more like, no, 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 die. You, it, it's, it's so extreme. 
it is. Uh, and that's that's part of the mechanism of it. Uh, you can't be loud and proud about this shit, or they'll try to put you right back in your place. Uh, that's that's the function of what the statues were. That's the function of what that flag is. And that's what it always has been. It has nothing to do with heritage, nothing to do with history. Well, I mean, it does have to do with history, but yeah. not the kind of history they think it is, or they say it is. Yeah, it's more about having somebody looking over you all the time, reminding you that this is where you're meant to be and if you fuck around you absolutely find out like stay where you're you know stay in your place it's wild right. and so what kind of is your what kind of because i know like for me my goal well i say my goal i feel like my my goal my calling my sort of vibe is that i want all of us to become more well versed at the nuanced sort of um things you like you said the things that people don't say out loud or you know they kept saying to us that this um murderous nurse she's an anomaly she's an anomaly they kept presenting her to us that way and i was like actually stats show us that she's not an anomaly at all the, there's a long history of women just like her who have done a similar thing so i'm trying to say the quiet parts out loud what is it for you like as you've kind of grown on tiktok what what do you find that is your thing that you're like this is what i hope i achieve with this page with what i'm currently doing in my life like what's your thing well I'm, um, again i wasn't intentional i wasn't trying to get blown up on tiktok I, I had 400 when i first started making the videos i had 400 followers i wasn't big and i, and I didn't think i was gonna get big uh now that that's happened i have had to like recontextualize myself and i do hope that folks who come to my page that not only they take what I'm saying and understand that I'm just some dumb redneck. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not an educator. I'm not, I didn't, I never intended to be an influencer. I don't have any credentials. A lot of what I'm saying, there are sources out there to back it up. Yes. Uh, I, I mentioned Tim Wise before. Uh, there's folks like Tara Vance out there who's doing a whole bunch of educating, a whole bunch of activism. Mm -hmm. uh, she's also Melungeon. She's from this this area mm -hmm. um there's a podcast called black in appalachia oh. uh and it's hosted by two black folks that live in i believe tennessee uh matter of fact one, once i get off this call they um just recently did an episode where they talked with clara hughes who's a 102 year old black woman that lives in oak ridge tennessee wow. okay. and i'm really excited to hear about that because you don't get to be that old without hearing some, without having some stories yes. um that's what I'm, but that's what I'm hoping is that I don't, I really hope that people aren't just using, you know, my thing as like, oh, this is, this is the gospel. Like, no, you, you take what I'm telling you and go out there and find out more about it. Cause you're going to, cause you can come back and find out that some of the shit I told you wasn't isn't entirely true. Mm -mm -mm. Um, the same thing that I told, the same thing about like, uh, my video about the white race, you know, I was wrong on how long, uh, how long it had been happening because i had said 400 years and folks had said no it's really more like 600 yeah uh because the moors had kind of started or the moors were getting involved and the spanish were terrified of that and all that and i don't and that's not nitpicking like that history is important those 200 years are important because yes. that's where all the cool rebellions happened yes. that's where the people resisted and that's the kind of stories i like to hear <laughs> yeah but i like to, I, I, like I like it. to hear about the one I, I oh, love sorry. it either. Um, I love it either way because I feel like the, what you're saying is exactly for me what my podcast is about, what my social media platforms across the internet is about. I'm not saying that I'm the expert. I'm not saying that I know all of the things, but I'm a bloody good learner. Like I want, I'm a great student, and I'm trying to learn all these things. And then what I learn. I share with everybody else like oh look what I just found out somebody else might come along and be like oh you take that away add this part but if we don't start the conversation then how do we go anywhere you know and so I just appreciate the fact that I could come across a page like yours and you're actively involved in the conversation so big up yourself for that <laughs> thank you I appreciate it and I've I don't like I'm not used to having any kind of platform like this where I can do kind of the educated stuff. Um, before I was, when I was an activist in Louisville, I kind of made my own platform mm -hmm. and like, but my name wasn't attached to the things that I did because, um, I don't know about the guidelines in YouTube or not, but not everything that I did may have been, may not have always been legal. <laughs> yes. You know, 
yeah. I mean, we didn't we didn't hurt anybody, yeah. but like for example, when uh, during the Breonna Taylor case, uh, we were some of the folks that were making sure that like everybody in Louisville knew her name and knew her story. Uh, and you were going and we were going to put it in your face Good. one way or another. And it needed it needs it needed to be done because I'm so glad that you mentioned Breonna Taylor specifically because it felt like she was an afterthought um, with George Floyd. Like we know that black people across the board, the you know the respect isn't there in in you know the um you know the consciousness of America. But Brianna specifically, when we're thinking about misogynoir, I just felt like I felt heartbroken. Sandra Bland, like so many black women, and I'm talking about all black, um, you know, all black women, including trans women in that as well. Like, and that's why we have, you know, that um, hashtag say her name because it's like things happen, and then people are just like, oh, it was just one black bitch, forget about it. And it's just like, no, because if we don't change the way that people view or um, society views black women, things like this will continue to happen so i'm glad that people were specifically being like look at what happened with um, brianna taylor because even getting justice for her regarding the people the police officers who killed her has proven way more arduous than you know what happened with george floyd oh absolutely uh they did just recently finally come out and tell us what black people have been telling us in that area for years is that brianna taylor's case it was a hit uh, those cops showed up. It wasn't specifically after her. It's just they wanted that property. That whole area is getting um, gentrified. Wow. And so they were at those properties, and they're going to get them one way or another. And the easiest way to do that is to charge the people that are living in them with drug crimes and take them to jail. Wow. Yeah, because we, have, we do have civil forfeiture laws here, which basically means, you know, you go to jail on a drug crime, they could take your house damn oh yeah uh and so that is what they were there to do and yeah and yeah if they tried to resist against that well we know what happens with people who don't comply but then this is what's mad because to me it's like the strategy is clearly there when they want to take your shit like the strategy is very 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 much there but then i've heard of this um tragic um shooting that happened um, at the dollar store recently and, and three black people were killed. And the guy's like, I'm a white supremacist. Here's my manifesto. I killed them because they're black. I meant that shit. I meant that shit. And news platforms are like, hmm, we wonder what could be their motivations. What the fuck? They just told, they, like, he told you his motivation. Just fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Oh. <laughs> and it's... And this isn't even the first time it's happened. They did the same thing with fucking Dylan Roof. Yes. When he, when he showed up and said, you know, I am a white supremacist. I'm here to kill black people. Wearing white supremacist in imagery all over his jacket right. while he's doing it. And, yeah, the, the right-wing media was saying, like, oh, this is an attack on Christians. This is an attack on Christianity. And it's like, no, the fuck it ain't. <laughs> it isn't because he chose that church. He chose his church specifically and the evil of like sitting there with them, letting them pray all of that stuff and then still doing what you were going to like. It's mad. And then there was the, the food store. Oh, it's gone out of my head. There was a food store. Is it Buffalo? Um, where there was another mass shooting there as well. And for me, it's interesting that these white, these self-professed white supremacists are going into areas where the socioeconomic um, experience or li life, lives of the people who live there, they're already struggling as it is. And it's most likely to be people of color who live in those areas of, um, as well of a particular um, class background. And they're being killed. They're already living in fucking food deserts. They're already not having access to great food. If you look at the su the supermarket that they went to shoot them up, if you look at the um, idea of the dollar store, you're you're not going to, um, uh, what is it, um, Whole Foods. You're you're choosing areas specifically where it feels like oh they're bait. They're just they're they're easy pickings. It's weird. Mm -hmm. And I will say, here's one positive. But I think it's positive anyway. Uh, news story that came out of that is that Dylan Roof is basically what he's in. He's in prison right now, and they pretty much have to keep him separate from Gen Pop because every time they try to mix him in with Gen Pop, he's getting his ass whooped. Good, 
good. And that's what right. we see every time. Every time, beat his ass. Every time, fuck him up. Oh, yeah. Because it, it, and the fact that they were so gentle with him, like, they tell us all the right. time, like, oh, we couldn't apprehend this black person, this unarmed black person, because we thought that they were a threat. But you knew that, like, they knew that he'd gone into that church and shot all the people up, and they still managed to bring him out gently. Um, they managed to get him food. I thought, wow. Wow. So it's actually yeah. possible to apprehend somebody alive. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, like, to me, that tells me because there are Peckerwoods in that prison where he's at, and they're not even looking out for him. Wow. Uh, so uh, that goes back to what I've been saying before. Like, understand if you're white and you're speaking up and speaking out on behalf of white supremacy, there is no guarantee that other white folks are going to back you up. You don't actually have that. Uh, on the other hand, if you show up and show out for black folks, they will look out for you every yeah. single time. Yeah, <laughs> so true. And then... Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't get it. <sighs> that <laughs> motherfucker. Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't understand it either, honestly, because this is this is one that was kind of a... It's weird that they turned him... Honestly, the, Pe the Peckerwoods turned him into a folk hero. Uh, and it doesn't make any sense to me why. Because this was the goddamn behavior of a cowardly child who was given a weapon he should never have had brought to an area he had no business being in getting mixed up in business he had nothing to do with mm -hmm. yeah and now they've proclaimed him some kind of little savior and he's getting these book deals and he's getting and he's touring and he's making money and it's it's wild to me because it's like this is white <laughs> supremacy in action like he's being rewarded for hurting people yeah but one of the people that he hurt was white yeah right. what, what huh like okay we know we know that but we know what the intention also was in the whole situation yeah um juxtapose what happened to him with what happened to uh the gentleman in portland i know his name but i can't pronounce it well so i'm not gonna try and embarrass myself <laughs> uh but he uh but if you can look up the story and find it, um, he iced a white supremacist in Portland. Like he, he did straight up ambush him and body him. Mm -hmm. um, and a few days later, while they're trying to build a case to arrest him, uh, Donald gets wind of it and sends the fucking marshals to take him out. Wow. And he even, he even admit, admitted, like, he bragged about it in crowds in front of people. Like, that's what they did. Like we sent the marshals, they were there, they were, they were in and out and they weren't there to arrest him. Those are Donald's words. That's what he said. They didn't come there to arrest him. Wow. It's a yeah, lot. So there, there's, there's your difference. You know, if you speak up and speak on behalf of white supremacy, maybe they'll turn you into a folk hero or maybe you'll be Dylan Roof in a prison cell getting your ass whooped every <laughs> Every time you uh, pop you your face out of your cell. This is it, because you can't even call it. There's no consistency to it. There's no consistency to, like, if you do right. this, this because they might decide that that day that you're the sacrifice, because there's always got to be a little sacrifice to keep the power structure, um, you know, intact. So if it's like, oh, this murderous cop, we're going to have to give him life sentence or whatever, whatever, we're going to do that because we're sacrificing the one to keep the however many. Right. And I shouldn't call Kyle a folk hero because he's not really. It's it's a manufactured thing. It's an astroturf thing. Uh, in 20 years, he's going to be a footnote. Uh, whereas folk, we have real folk heroes out here. You know, we we have folks like John Dillinger. We uh, and those people get remembered uh, all the way down. The time. They get movies made about them. They get stories told about them. Uh, and the, and these are not people that went along with the program. These were the folks that broke the rules. Yes. Yeah. And you're right that it's manufactured. You're right that it's AstroTurf because they're trying to, that you can see them trying to create him. You can see a team behind him dressing him a particular way, giving him a particular kind of um, narrative to follow because they're trying to manufacture. They're trying to create a hero in him when he's just any little dickhead. So... It's, it's fascinating but i'm so thankful that you were able to make time for me today for us to chat and i hope you'll come back like there are certain new segments or like that i read and i'm what? like it'll be great to have somebody else's opinion on this so if you're ever up for it do come back and join the people um and uh well i'll tag your tiktok 
in the captions of the show so they can find you there. But is there anywhere else you'd like them to find you? Oh, um, right now I'm going to try to stick to the TikTok because it's easier for me to manage. I do have a couple of other social medias and there are like little subtle clues that are in my TikTok. Like if you really want to find me, it's not that hard to find me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, make, I don't make it easy on purpose because it's easier to deal with the trolls if they're just coming out of one platform. Oh. Tell me about it. I've been getting it on YouTube. I've been getting it on TikTok. I've been getting it on Twitter. They, Instagram, not so much because I limit who can comment on my page, but they've really been coming at me. So I hear you concentrate and consolidate all of the fuckery in one place. Much easier to moderate. But thank you so much, Crash. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And I am back. Ooh, so how did you enjoy the conversation with our redneck baby boy crash very cute very cute and let me know like do you want him to come back featuring it because i feel like it'll be good to get his take on some things i feel like it'll be good to get some of you lot's takes on some things actually so um yeah but you have to be good at speaking concisely. Look at me talking. But you really have to because you can't be just dragging out the thing forever. Like, make the point. You have to be quick at making the point. Maybe you have to, like, do a sort of, like, talent show where I look for the next um, Say Your Mind co-host to, you know, take over from Sadiq. Maybe eventually take over from me. Um, you know, making the straw. Making the straw flinger. Stars in their straws. <laughs> I don't know. But I think like the straw factor. <laughs> That'll be a mood. That'll be a mood. Yes. Um, well, thank you for your five minute piece, the camera there. You were wonderful. I really love the passion that you spoke with. I especially love the insults that you sort of sprinkled in throughout when you were talking about the dickheaded politicians. Really, really great. However, I would have liked to see a bit more of you. So um, I guess it's a no from me. I don't think people should have to go through that. But I feel like I'm I'm sure that there must be a competition out there that's kind of like X Factor. But it's like the next activist. If that's the case, then we are in hell. <laughs> like we are actually in hell. Yeah. Um, and also for transparency, I actually went away from for a few hours before coming to report, um, report, record this segment because I'm not going to be talking at speed like a thief and like somebody's chasing me. So I went away, did my bits um, for Lev's birthday for a few hours and then came back and continued the recording. As you can see, I'm still cute. <laughs> no, I was going to make a comment that's, that, that I mentioned earlier, but I'm going to leave that. Um, so, yes back and i enjoyed crash let me know if you want crash to come back and yeah it was a mood and what you thought of the whole conversation because i definitely learned things especially about like people who are referred to as rednecks and i don't know if you'll notice or if you notice the first time round, but there's no more music thank god because i oh god give me my own building immediately Ugh. anyway we continue. So that's that for Share Your Magnificence. Two slaps on your chest crash. Thank you for being a white person that gets it and you're doing your bit. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm always very careful about giving white people flowers or giving white people cookies, but well done. Well done for being part of a wholesome conversation with me and for doing you and making the change where you're at. I love that for us. All right, so let's get into So You Mad for this week. So I was reading about um, the rent increases, or no, not the rent increases, the fact that they're going to freeze um, rents, I think it was, around um, Germany, which I think is important. Like, if Germany can do it, then I don't know why everybody else is struggling. It's very, very mad to me that, we can't just do the right thing and be like, you know what? The prices, the rent is going through the roof. We need to have some kind of rent control because this isn't how people are meant to be living. Um, 
And I hate the way that it's talked about like, oh, it's just out of our control. There's nothing we can do. It is just what it is. It says here, renters in Germany could receive long awaited relief as the ruling Social Democratic Party considers proposing a three year freeze on rents. Um, tenants across Europe's largest economy have struggled against the deepening cost of living crisis, which has seen rents surge to record levels. Senior SDP lawmaker Verena Huberts um, told um, Bill, Bild am Sonntag, we need to create breathing room. We need a rent freeze for um, the next freeze. We need a rent freeze for the next freeze. According to the German Federal S uh, Statistical Office, almost half of Germany's 41 million households are living in rented accommodation with just a fifth owning their own home so all of you people that like to shout up and down in london like oh why don't you have a mortgage yet why aren't you doing this why do you want people to come and join you in debt because that's really it unless you brought that bought that house outright you're in debt yes you've got some brick and mortar but you're in debt and it can take the house from you really at any time and this is what you need to understand look at me putting the phone down because i'm about to give a word this is what you need to understand about thinking that you're standing on top of some kind of hill and that you can look down on other people who are in the valley right in the valleys no like that you can look down on people because it's wild the state that we're in now if you lose your job tomorrow it's not even what i'm wishing on you god forbid but you lose your job tomorrow how will you keep up those rent, um, those mortgage repayments? So, oh, I've got my own home. I've got my own home. The home belongs to the bank. And I think that if we start getting our verbiage right around that, then we'll be in a much better position. I'm not saying don't have your mortgages, but don't be talking about other people like because they haven't joined you in getting a mortgage. Somehow they're irresponsible. Behave. So anyway, back to this. Under existing legislation, rent increases were capped at 20% over three years and 15 years in areas deemed to have a particularly uh, tight housing market. But according to proposals seen by news agency Deutsche Press Agentur, um, rents will be allowed to rise by 6% in cities with high demand, while a blanket freeze would be imposed across the rest of Germany. Um, the proposal has no doubt been prompted by soaring inflation and housing shortages exacerbated by the arrival of more than one million Ukrainian refugees. Statistics show that more than 15 percent of Germans are spending at least 40 percent of their income on rent, with 1.5 million spending more than half of their pay on rents that don't include utilities. Landlords are thieves. They're thieves. People who aspire to be landlords, people who are landlords now, like, I don't know what to tell you. This is ridiculous. The, how do we live in a... Wait, wait. Can we just all take a moment and consider our lives? You spend most of your time at work. If you're working full time, pretty much five days out of seven, while well, some of you are lawyers, doctors, whatever. So I can even say seven days out of seven, you are working. You get minimal sleep. And then now when you get paid from working that much, you now must give at least at least half of what you have earned to keep a roof over your head only you're not under that roof because you're under your company's roof working that is a scam like that is a fucking scam wow as the UK grapples with spiraling housing and energy costs, it's perhaps no wonder tenants are calling for the implementation of rent freezes as inflation pushes households to the brink. Research from The Guardian published in December last year reveals the scale of the current crisis with asking rents on new listings up by almost a third since 2019. Meanwhile, members of the London's, uh, London Renters Union reported average annual rent increases of almost £3,400, with one union member forced out of their property after being charged an extra £8,000 a year. It's getting ridiculous. It says here... Advocates of rent freezes point to Scotland when Nic um, Nicola Sturgeon introduced a cap on in-tenancy rent rises until March. Um, 
Measures like an old um, end to no fault evictions and a rent freeze can bring us closer to a housing system that prioritizes human need over the profits of a tiny few. I agree. Mayor of London Sadiq Khan has also backed demands for freezes, calling on ministers to implement a two year cap on private rents in the capital. But they won't do that because a lot of the MPs um, that have their second homes and stuff and do this and do that, they rent it out. So they're the land. They're the um, I keep, they're the landlords. They're the problem. They're the problem. Like, we keep going, where are the demons? Where are the demons? The demons are right there. So they're the problem. They're not going to do anything to make life easier if it's going to mean that they lose some of their profit. Um, he, Sadiq Khan went on to say, he, um, he told an emergency summit in November, the fact that 40% of Londoners think that they will struggle to make uh, their rent payments in the next six months shows the scale of the housing crisis in London. Um, London's private renters are facing a triple whammy with rising rents, bills and cost of households and um, household essentials, putting a major strain on their finances. Ministers must take this crisis seriously and act now. You know, they're not going to act now. You ain't got no money. I love that meme. Um, that's what they think. Every time you're like, oh, can you do anything to help the citizens of this country? You ain't got no money. But we've got money all the you time for coronations no of minions of Beelzebub. Interesting. Interesting times we live in. Also known as the end times, <laughs> if you will. Um, moving on from uselessness to uselessness, Luis Rubiales, the um, guy, the head of um, the thingy in Spain to do with football, you know the one. His mum, you know the one that kissed um, Jenny Hermoso, kissed her on the lips when Spain won the World Cup, the Women's World Cup. Um, his mum, to protest because she was so upset at the way that her son was being treated, apparently, she went on a hunger strike. Auntie, how do you even say auntie in Spanish? Uh, I don't know. It's not coming to me. Is it abuela? You lasted. It's not abuela. That must be something else. Look, don't come for me, Spanish people. Por favor. Okay? Mi gusto, mi gusto. I don't know. Anyway, um, auntie, you lasted two days. <laughs> auntie, you lasted two days. All this shouting up and down that you were doing about the way that they've treated your son. I'm she, like, nah, she was moving like a Nigerian woman. Hey, they have accused my son of something that he definitely, definitely did. And because I raised him poorly, I can't take this. I can't take this. I'm going to go and lock myself in the church. I can't take this. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa. You went and locked yourself in the church and you said you're going on hunger strike. <laughs> After 48 or so hours, you said, hey, I'm seeing double. Everything is double, double. Everything is double. And they had to rush you to hospital. You nonsensical woman. Of all the ways that you could have been affecting your blood sugar, it's over your son that was lips in people that he should have, shouldn't have been lips in. You're the problem. I hate it sometimes when people go, ah, oh, well, what about, what were their mothers doing? So I'm like, why don't you ask about the fucking fathers? But you, as a mother, you've shown yourself to be the problem. So now when I, if I wanted to say suck your mother, I'll be right. <sighs> Spanish FA chief's mum leaves hospital after panic attack three days into hunger strike. The father of the church where Luis Rubiales' mother, Angeles Angeles, Angeles Bejar, um, or Bejar, is it Beves? I don't know. I had locked herself in, says, um, had locked herself in. Let me start again. The father of the church where Luisa Rubiales' mother, Angelis Beha, had locked herself in, says the OAP <laughs> was very poorly and had a lot of problems, and he now expects her to end her hunger strike. Um, She's um, left hospital after a health scare nearly three days into her hunger strike over the treatment of Kissgate scandal son. The suspended FA, Spanish FA chief is said to have accompanied 72-year-old Angeles Bejar after she was given permission um, 
late last night to leave Santa Ana Hospital in Montreal near Malaga. She was admitted to hospital around 6.30 on Wednesday after falling ill at Divina Pastora Church where she launched her surprise no food protest on Monday morning. Her whereabouts this morning was unclear. Hopefully your whereabouts is in your dining room or in your kitchen eating some food. Like get, get a fucking grip. She's understood to have left hospital around 11.30 p.m. yesterday and is now expected to keep a low profile. Better. It's better for you because you really disgraced yourself. First, you disgraced yourself by wanting to publicly back your son for the nonsense that he did. And then you disgraced yourself further because you committed to your, your you committed yourself to something that you couldn't even see through. What a wago wago wa mother that you are. The love of your son didn't feel your, couldn't quell the acid that was in your tummy. The love of your son could not do that. You were so sure. Sh- nah, even your intestines knew that your son was in the wrong. Your intestines knew, your stomach knew that your son was in the wrong. Because after they've been waiting there, like, is she going to feed us anytime soon? Well, she's not feeding us over that bitch. Oh, watch me work. Oh. And they just dealt with you. They dealt with you. Your eyes started just rolling around. Your head started doing scon scon. Because what nonsense. Every part of your body said, I'm not with this shit. The body really kept the score in that regard. Fucking hell. Um, she is expected to keep a low profile while her health is monitored. Parish priest Father Antonio had told Waiting Press yesterday afternoon the retired hairdresser would be um, leaving the church briefly to speak publicly for only the second time since she launched her hunger strike. But around her scheduled exit time of 6.30pm, he emerged instead to make the shock announcement she had instead been taken to hospital. Um... Father Antonio, who declined to give his surname, said yesterday afternoon, Angelus has got worse, and so they have to take her to hospital as a matter of urgency. She's not at the church anymore. She was very poorly and already had a lot of problems, but she took a turn for the worse and suffered a panic attack, saying she felt very anguished and dizzy and very strange. The strangeness that you feel is called stupidity. Yeah? She left around 6.15 p.m. via a back door of the church. She still wasn't eating and was just drinking water and isotonic drinks. But my understanding is she'll have to break her hunger strike now. I don't know if she has been or if she's been uh, accompanied by relatives now and how she got to hospital because I didn't see an ambulance. Nah, this priest is wild because he was like, I'm not fucking involved. So you're telling me you didn't call the ambulance. You kind of just watched her like, girl, if this is what you want to do, okay okay it's literally your funeral okay like auntie get a grip no i actually now want to know how to say auntie in spanish because i need it for my nomenclature of insults if you will auntie in spanish in española por favor tia i knew that i said abuela abuela is grandmother in it Abuela's grandmother, Tia. I knew that because I used to watch um, Jane the Virgin and I used to watch um, Ugly Betty. So I knew that. And I used to watch Sunset Beach. Wow. Imagine Carl, Lewis, Carl Davison, Hamilton. See, everything is all coming back to me now. <laughs> anyway, now I know. It's Tia. Tia! Please don't do this here. Okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> anyway, um, from uh, somebody... <laughs> so I'm just moving from madness to madness to madness because now the level of madness that we're moving to is monstrous. It's a monstrosity. Yeah? Let's get into it. Ex-Tory MP threatens to sue Cambridge University over slavery research. The former Tory MP Antoinette Sandbach. That's such an interesting name. Sounds like Sandbach. And it also sounds like you can do it, put Sandbach into it. Hey, I can do it, put Sandbach into it. Anyway, Tory MP Antoinette Sandbach has threatened the University of Cambridge with legal action after a historian named her as a descendant of merchants who enslaved his ancestors. Malik Al Nasir a third year PhD history student at St. Catherine's College, has spent the past 20 years, 20 years, exploring his family's history of slavery and the wealth that was built from those who enslaved them. 
He discovered his ancestors were enslaved in plantations in the former colony of British Guyana, now known as Guyana, during the 18th and 19th centuries. Al Nasir claims a substantial amount of the wealth from plantation slavery was brought to Liverpool by Samuel Sandbach and his business part- um, and his business partners, the same city Al Nasir grew up in. Al Nasir claims he, were, he has been pressed to remove a reference in his work to Antoinette Sandbach, a former MP of Edisbury in Cheshire, who is a descendant of Samuel Sandbach and beneficiary of his estate. Sandbach has said she supports and appreciates the importance of Al Nasir's work, but raised concerns that she was being singled out in an online TED talk given by him. The Guardian understands Sandbach's lawyers have threatened to sue the University of Cambridge over the TED talk. My cultural identity has been obscured by slavery and colonialism, said Al Nasir. Searching for my roots, I uncovered the connection to these people. The fact that Antoinette Sandbach descends directly from Samuel Sandbach, one of the richest and most prolific slave merchants in Britain in the 18th and 19th century, is a fact that emerged from the research. He added, the fact that I mentioned that as a footnote to a talk that I gave online does not constitute an attack on the individual. It's merely a statement of historical facts and a matter of public record. Al Nasir has yet to receive direct correspondence from Sandbach's solicitors. The Guardian understands Sandbach first messaged Al Nasir on Twitter about his research and the two had a cordial exchange. Sandbach then emailed Al Nasir's academic su- supervisor and asked that the reference of her be removed from his TED talk, claiming that there were inaccuracies, that she was being unfairly singled out for being an MP. Al Nasir said he responded to the allegations of factual, inaccuracy, um, factual inaccuracies directly to his supervisor, who was satisfied that they were unfounded. Sandbach then made a complaint to the University of Cambridge, which had embedded the talk video, uh, the TED Talk video on its website on the grounds it breached her right to privacy. The Guardian understands Sandbach complained the TED Talk claimed she lived in Wales when she no longer lived there. She also said she had the right to be forgotten as she was no longer a public figure. After an investigation by the university's Information Compliance Office, ICO, Sandbach's request to have her name removed was rejected on the grounds of academic freedom. Sandbach informed Al Nasir she was in the process of instructing solicitors. She added that she was also thinking of making a formal complaint to the ICO. As part of her correspondence, Sandbach noted her concern that Al Nasir's research had ignored the legal position of British women in the 19th century. She initially argued to Al Nasir and Cambridge's data protection team and later to her followers on twitter that a wife was the chattel of her husband and that marital rape was not abolished um, abolished until 1991 because a woman was considered a, the property of her husband. Anasir told The Guardian he was flabbergasted by the argument. I am a historian of 18th and 19th century slavery, not a historian of women's suffrage. <laughs> Sandbach did not respond to repeated requests for comment. But in a statement later released on Twitter, Sandbach said she was supported, supportive of Anasir's research and appalled by the actions of her ancestors. She added that she was not seeking to prevent free speech, nor was she suppressing academic research, but objected to what she described as ongoing data breaches by Cambridge University and Al Nasir. She said she believed that these breaches risked compromising her personal safety. She added that though she had not been subject to racism, women's oppression was the closest prism through which she could understand it, writing that many of the racist tropes of the past were also used to suppress women's rights. Fuck you. A, sup- um, a spokesperson for St. Catherine's College said St. Catherine's is absolutely committed to upholding freedom of speech and ensuring all of our students, including Malik Al Nasir, are able to freely pursue their scholarly interests by providing access to academic, pastoral and, where possible, financial support throughout their studies. A spokesperson for the University of Cambridge said, this is an ongoing legal matter, so we are unable to comment. Thank you, Amna Modine, for writing that article. Antoinette, do you know what happened to the last Antoinette that tried this fuck shit? Think over to France. Get your Eurostar cap on, love. There was another Antoinette. She went by Marie. But she fucked around and she found out. Yeah? Let the people do their things. If you were so concerned, if you were so concerned about the appalling behavior of your ancestors... The money that you've been chopping from the moment that you were born, you would find a way to share it with the people that are descendants of the people that were enslaved 
by your ancestors. You do that. But even if you didn't want to do that, you know what you could have done? You could have changed your name. You could have changed your name because wasn't um, Benedict Cumberbatch, is that his name? Wasn't he encouraged by one of his relatives to change his name because they knew this very thing would happen? I want to write a horror movie. You know, kind of like Atlanta, that Atlanta episode where people find out the current living, like the living people who um, are an, um, descendants of the people who ens um, enslaved their ancestors, right? Black people find out who enslaved their ancestors and um, and find out the people are still alive. I'm explaining this poorly. And so they can go and chase them up for the money. And that Atlanta e um, episode was brilliant. But I want to do a horror movie j based around that. Like the thing that white people fear the most, because why not? I want to make a horror movie about the things that white people are scared of. <laughs> that would be a hilarious collection. You're a genius. The things that white people are scared of. And one of them would definitely be, be being called racist. That's why it's funny to me when people like Dan Wooten, that ugly bitch, when they turn around and they go, oh, isn't what Kelechi did there um, anti-white racism? Isn't what Dawn Butler, what she said there, isn't that racism and disgusting? You're saying that you're saying it like it's going to affect us the same way. I don't feel anything when you call me racist. I don't feel anything in my body when you call me racist. Why? Because I'm not a fucking racist. It's not possible for me to perpetuate racism. If you were going to call me prejudiced, if you were going to call me um, discriminative, like those are things, yeah. But to call me racist, I do not have the systemic power to see that through. And also all the time I'm checking myself my, about my preconceived notions of other people. Like you're not doing the same. And that's why you're a piece of shit, okay, but they say it to you, like, well, you're a reverse racist, because they're thinking that it's going to affect you the way that seasoning affects them, yeah, like, Ugh! but it doesn't do that to me, I'm all right, I'm all right, because I know that you're chatting shit, and you're deflecting, so this one now, that she's upset, like, you were mentioned, like, for all of a few seconds, like, you're not even that girl, you're not that girl, you're not the plantation girly that you think you are in that regard, but you're mentioned because these are the real life things, the way, same way that we talked about David Cameron, and um, Benedict Cumberbatch, all of them people that I've mentioned on the show so far, who are a direct descendants of um, slave traders, like you're one of them, and it's very important for us to know where your money comes from, why are you trying to obfuscate us knowing proper history and this is why people are walking around fucking stupid walking around making ridiculous flagrant remarks about the history of britain because people like yourself have tried to obscure what we are able to see of that history so then when people like myself come with some receipts and, and i'm like oh look this happened and this happened and, Mal and malik al nasir is like this happened people like you jump up and be like well that's not important now is it it's absolutely important now because the social strata that you are able to to enjoy in this society you only gain that because of the depraved and appalling abhorrent acts of your ancestors so if you're so concerned give up everything you own if you want all of this to go away give up absolutely everything you own and you have a fucking cheek talking about well women were men's properties like i'm not even going to go into this again because we literally talked about the um, role that white women played in the slave trade. We literally talked about that a couple of weeks ago, if not last week. And I know that there's that book, They Were Her Property. Like, don't try it. White women were just as involved. Don't fucking try it. Disgusting behavior. Big up yourself, Malik Al Nasir. Chase her down chase her down your ancestors are proud not the ones that will be shouting that my ancestors are proud because i took on an mbe or an obe your ancestors are proud big up yourself and do this for the people of guyana yes yes nonsense behavior sandbach go and eat some sand ridiculous behavior anyway that's that for so you mad i feel like i've covered quite a bit I got through, yeah, I think I covered quite a bit. Might as well move into straw of the week, aka suck your mom. Oh, well, <clears throat> did I talk about this already? Maybe I didn't. But what I want to mention is rest in peace to uh, Boyega Odubanjo, who f was found dead um he was meant to perform at a festival he's a poet he was meant to perform at a festival and he'd been missing for days um he didn't show up for his set um at the festival um 
And then his body was found, I think, by a lake. And guys, girls, folks, my NBs, I've been saying there is something going on with black people first going missing and their bodies being discovered by bodies of water. Now that people are talking about it more, but remember my frustration when I was trying to make the links, the connections a little while ago. And I said that I was frustrated by the way that the police kept saying that, um, you know, they found their bodies and um, it, there was nothing suspicious about the death. So immediately the, the case is closed. That is racist to me. There's something about that, that their, their unwillingness to even to even look into what might have happened and i remember people um a couple of people being like oh usually they say that because the person took their own life and whatever that no 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 you try to whether well-meaning or not you try to stop me then and i knew like this is why i feel like this time of my life i'm just being asked to trust my instincts because i've been saying like some shit shit is fucked up and then now you're seeing the pattern more and more. With Blessing, she was on the phone. She was on the phone to somebody and she was like, oh, wait one second. So how how did she go from, oh, wait one second, when she was just going over to um, the, what, the seaside town or wherever she was to go and look after um, one of the clients um, as a care person. She was just going to go and do her job fast, fast. And the next thing you know, boom, she's dead. Her body found by the water or her remains, her clothing or whatever found by the water. And you and then they said, you know, there was nothing suspicious about this. What the fuck do you mean it's not suspicious? And this is why I hate, like, I just wish that some of you would just would stop fucking second guessing me when I say certain things. Of course, we have to hold everybody to account. And there are just some things I know in my body, like it's wrong. And then now that it's, we're seeing the pattern more clearly, more people are tweeting about it like, oh, you know, this and that, this and that. But we've been saying. Like you're telling me the people that are saying that this shit isn't suspicious, they're the same people that when they found Nicole Smallman and Biba Henry, when they found their body in that park, what did they do? The police, they took pictures and sent it to their WhatsApp group. The, you want me to believe that that same police is going to tell me that there's nothing suspicious about all of these random black and um, young, you know, relatively young black people being found dead by bodies of water. And I want to push it further. Quite a few of them. And there was one um, in Liverpool, I believe, recently, right? Or near Liverpool, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere up north. And then... um. There was that Irish boy that's heartbreaking. Every time I think about it, I just want to cry. And I don't know if I've amplified it enough. Um, a little boy, his parents are seeking or his mum's seeking justice as to how his body ended up in like a drain pipe in Ireland. Like, what? But I was going to say about the other cases I'm noticing, a lot of them are Nigerian. I don't know what's going on but it's not good it is not good so but that's not even my straw of the week um what i wanted to talk about was um what it says here three people were killed in a shooting saturday afternoon at a dollar general store in jacksonville florida um authorities said that it was racially motivated the suspect died by suicide um official said in a news conference Saturday evening, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters said that the suspect, described as a white man in his early 20s, entered a dollar store just after 1 p.m. and opened fire, killing three people. All the victims were black. Um, he targeted um, a certain group of people, and that's black people, Waters said. The suspect then died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Waters, uh, Waters disclosed his name was not immediately released no one else was wounded in the shooting the victims two males and a female were not immediately identified the suspect was wearing a tactical vest and mask and was armed with a Glock and an AR-15 style rifle um, there were also swastikas on the guns um, in the news conference Jacksonville Mayor Donna Deegan called the shooting a hate-filled crime the suspect who lived in Jacksonville's Clay County with his parents um, authored several manifestos, Waters said, um, including one to his parents, another to the media and a third to federal agents 
At 1.18 p.m. local time, the shooter told his father to check his computer and by 1.53 p.m., the shooter's family called the Clay County Sheriff's Office. By that time, he'd already began shooting in Jacksonville. The gunman's journals detailed his disgusting ideology of hate, Waters said. In them, the gunman also, um, his name is Ryan Palmita, I believe. Ryan Palmita. Very horrid looking boy. Um, the gunman also disclosed that the shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people. Uh, the gunman acted completely alone and was not believed to be part of any large group, Waters said. He's part of a large group. And this is where you lot always fuck up. Today, you managed to say, oh, it was racially motivated, racially tinged, racially. It was just racist. It was just fucking racist. It was just fucking racist. And he is part of a large group. He's part of the largest group that causes violence across the world and has done historically. And that is the group that is grouped together, collectively called white. He is part of that. He's not acting alone. He's acting on the whims of white supremacy. That is what he's doing. Like he literally had, what do you mean he's acting alone? You saw the swastikas, you saw the this, you saw the manifestos, you saw the that, and then you're still saying he acted alone? No, clearly not. They're part of an online or in-person sort of um, brotherhood. He's part of a larger network. Because if this was a person who was of brown skin and they were part of the um, 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 Islamic faith, you would turn around and definitely say that they were part of something, even if they were, quote unquote, acting alone. So how is it different this time? You do, Because of the way you lot keep fucking it up when you're so close to the finish line, it means that we can't talk robustly about the radicalization, the consistent radicalization of white men and boys. We're not able to talk about it and it's becoming rampant because of social media wild scenes the shooter was previously involved in a 2016 domestic incident for which he was not arrested waters disclosed in 2017 according to waters the shooter was also committed under florida's baker act which is a law that allows law enforcement officers and certain medical personnel to involuntarily institutionalize people who could be considered a harm to themselves or others for up to 72 hours Officers with the Jacksonville's um, Sheriff's Office and firefighters with the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department were on um, scene investigating along with members of the FBI. The FBI will pursue this incident as a hate crime, um, said Sherry Onks, um, special agent in charge of the FBI Jacksonville field office. Um, the exact circumstances leading up to the shooting were still unclear. Deegan previously um, said that following the killings, the suspect had barricaded himself inside the store. One shooting is too much, but these mass shootings are really hard to take, Deegan said um, from the scene during the standoff. Deegan said Saturday night that she was so sorry to have failed you in the ways we have to the black community. I will do anything in my power not to do that going forward. But everything you're in your power but you don't want to ban guns shouldn't we start there just ban guns um and there was that shooting in buffalo as well and that was like um you know like a budget supermarket there is a reason that these white mass shooters feel like they can go into communities of, um, of people who are of lower socioeconomic standing, who are usually black or brown people, go into there, um, or, you know, Latinx people, like, go in there and do whatever that they want to do. Because the way that it's already been positioned in society is that where, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fair play, like, it's fine, it's, we're fair game, like, go for it. That's why it is important to look at stereotypes and to confront them every single time because people are getting mad ideas. They're getting wild ideas and this is not okay. My heart goes out to the three people who were killed. Ryan Palmita, it will never, ever be well with you. You've decided that you wanted to take your own life. That's fine. You'll still have many, many lessons that you're going to go and learn about the, what you did in snatching the lives of other people away. It's scary to me that this is an ongoing thing in america and not just in america in that regard but the hatred the lack of humanity afforded to people who are not white just gets worse and worse and worse so when we have people like dan we have novara when we have all of these people who are stoking the flames of um rhetoric 
that means that people feel like they can just come at black women at people just anyhow these are the kind of things that i believe that it leads to it's very very sad to me very sad and you know fuck the media outlets suck your mum for eternity ryan but fuck the media outlets that consistently try to present this as again um an anomaly oh he was acting alone that he, whether he was acting alone like whether he was physically alone in the store means fuck all it means sweet fuck all when you consider the fact that he's not the first nor is he the hundredth or even the two hundredth or the three hundredth white boy or white man to have done this like it's constant it's so frequent that you must see the pattern and if you can see the pattern then something needs to be done well that is all i have i feel like i've gotten through it yeah yeah that's all i wanted to say i will go and get prepared for my things and you will get this on monday if there are any things that transpire between friday and monday ha! got nothing to do with me i guess i'll see you when i see you so thank you for listening i've been kelechi your car for and this has been sym officially known as say your mind unofficially known as what what that's right suck your mum um, we're getting ever closer to the live show at the barbican on the 12th of september um my publication date on the 14th of september can't believe i'm going to be a published author in less than i don't know two or so weeks matting 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 anyway look after yourself and i'll catch you on the flip side Peace. It's the Benz Brunani woman is baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this. Baby, sit down, sit down, receive this realness. Make sure your cup's ready for the tea, we are go sippy, yo. Hard time scrolling for your long shorts. You might learn something you never know. Could let you find, and she's one of a kind. Don't say you mind, say you mind.